Hello everyone. It's James again. And in today's video, I want to talk about boundaries. And why this is important when picking up the pieces of your life. After being narcissistically abused, regardless if we are talking about childhood narcissistic abuse, or if you are dating or married to one, and it's important to note, if you are married or dated one for a long period of time, there's a good chance you are a childhood narcissistic abuse victim. So boundaries will apply to all of the above. First off, I want to say, if you are a narcissistic abuse victim, don't live your life in a black hole, scared to talk to new people, and scared to make new friends, scared to date someone, and scared to build a new social life. By giving up in this way, you are basically saying, the narcissist in your life has won. When your life is one big misery, the narcissist that abused you is winning. And even if they are dead and gone, they are still affecting you from the grave. Let's face it. There are evil people in the world, and most of them mask themselves to be good, so they can move in and out of unsuspecting victims' lives undetected. But I have news for you. Since you were abused by these types, you know all the warning signs, red flags, and things to watch out for. What you must do is apply these things you know. If you meet someone new, regardless if things are going well, and even if it's just a new friend, and three months into knowing them, they gaslight you by saying, I didn't say that, to something they clearly said to you. You now have the choice to make, except this person is completely lying to your face, even if it's about something small. Or realize what type of person this really is and stop talking to this person altogether. And no, you don't have to tell this person. You know, they were just gaslighting you. And because of that, I can't be your friend. This could probably cause more issues than you care to have in your life. Such as this person starting a smear campaign against you. So what should you do instead? Don't fight the issue with this person. If they want to sit there and lie to you, let them. And after your day of hanging out, know in your mind this is the last time you are going to be dealing with this person. If they call you next week to hang out, don't answer your phone. If they text you don't answer your text. And if you answer, just let them know you are busy with a project from work or school, or a prior engagement you have. Eventually this person will move on to someone else to spend time with, and they will leave you alone. You see. In this instance, you might have the great time with this new friend for three or four months. You're hanging out, going places, and having a lot of fun. You think, wow, I've made a great friend. You feel like you can start trusting this person. Then out of nowhere, they either gaslight you by saying something. Then the next day, trying to tell you that you are crazy, that there's no way that they said what they said the day before, or out of nowhere. They were start to say, really cruel, backhanded comments, that are really put downs, disguised, as jokes, or they try to embarrass you in front of someone that is important, such as a new woman, you are dating. They might say things that make you look foolish, and incapable, but you should be thinking at that point, is the first few months, of you getting to know this new friend was nothing but a fraud, and what they are doing to you now is really who they are. And they are now showing you their true colors. And by you sticking around. You are saying loud and clear. You have no self-esteem. And that it's okay to treat you like dirt. So what boundary should you have? This boundary should be. This person has clearly. Crossed over the line. And purposely did so. And there's no going back. And you are now exercising this boundary by not answering their calls. And you are no longer spending time with this person. You are moving on in a sense. You see. We as victims get so screwed up. Because we always give these people. The benefit of the doubt. We let people. Like this run over us as much as they want. And then once they feel like they've pushed us too far. They balance it out with some nice treatment. And we stay hooked on the line dealing with such people. Sometimes for a lifetime. And this is where we get screwed up. Because we didn't get rid of these people. The first time they cross these boundaries. Because. Heck. We probably didn't have these boundaries to begin with. But if we would have gotten rid of these people from our life on month one, or two, or three, guess what? We would have been free to meet people that are good, and that don't treat people this way. 
and by staying around such people. We are preventing ourselves from having a full happy life. Then out of nowhere these people are gone. These friends, or dating partners, or people we were married to. And guess what? We are alone. We are alone because we didn't build a healthy life. Surrounding ourselves with good people. We spent our entire lives without boundaries surrounding ourselves with blood-sucking demons. But always remember this. If we look back far enough, usually they showed to us who they were within the first few months of knowing them. We are the ones that chose to ignore these warning signs and basically gave these people the green light to enter our lives and abuse us. Now that being said, don't beat yourself up regarding this fact. Because if you were raised in a narcissistically abusive home, you are purposely raised to not have boundaries. You are raised and conditioned to be a door mat and to keep chasing after your abuser, asking them, why oh why are you abusing me? Why can't you treat me the way I treat you? We were conditioned to be this way. But today is a new day. You've learned better. And you have learned different. Think about this fact. If someone has a good family around them, and if they meet a friend that's toxic, they can quickly leave this so-called friend alone and easily hang out with their brothers, sisters, or cousins. It's kind of like having a built-in friend for poop system. If your outside friends treat you bad, you can always spend time with your lifelong friends which is your family. For those out there that have healthy family units. And this is why these types usually have good friends along with good family. Because they know their worth. And they were conditioned to get rid of people that aren't like their family. People that treat them bad. People. That. Don't match their. Family dynamic. So they get rid of people that don't fit their family dynamic. But you. Your family dynamic is toxic. It's full of people trying to destroy your life. All the while, pretending they are the best parents on God's green earth. Your family dynamic is full of blood-sucking energy vampires. And they condition you to still care about them. To the point where you almost beg these people to love you. So it's not much of a shock. All of your friends you've met, and people you've dated or have been married to, are these same type of blood-sucking energy vampires. If you want to have a healthy and happy life, stop feeling bad for getting rid of people from your life and moving on. And no. If you made a mistake, and this person is really a good person, that you stopped hanging out with, it's a mistake, where no one got hurt, and you didn't hurt someone in the process of your moving on. Again, there's no need for telling off someone, because what if you are wrong, and even if you're right, all it will start is a bit mess, that could have been avoided, if you've known someone, for a few months, the best way to move on is to not pick up your phone when they call. No explanation. No nothing. Just move on. And if it's someone you're dating, just let them know that you're not in love and you're not feeling that spark and that life is short and people you're not feeling those deep feelings with. You don't want to waste any more of your or their time. Wish them luck and move on. No need to accuse them of being a narcissist. No need to tell them all the red flags you've noticed about them. Because, heck, they will just deny it anyway. Just move on. Now, there are instances when we all put our foot in our mouths including our friends and the people we date. You can tell there is a sincere sorrow about a situation. Because this person can come to you without you coming to them and explain in detail what they did to you and how long it was and why are they sorry for saying or doing what they did. Mind you, I would only stick around if this was something very small in nature. And it was caught by the person acting this way. Right as it was happening, we all caught ourselves and said, I'm sorry. That was a bad way of putting things. I hope I didn't insult you just now. And guess what? Usually such a situation will never happen again. But with narcissists and other toxic people it always does happen again. Even if it's a few months later, it always happens again. One thing you need to do, is go back to your early friendship, or when you first started dating. And if they treated you like you were the best friend on earth, or you were the best person they've ever dated, then out of nowhere, a few months later, they are insulting you for no good reason. It's a good indication this person is doing the narcissistic sweet mean cycle on you, where they reel you in with good behavior. And when you are now committed to being their friend, or dating partner, they then start treating you like dirt. 
or making backhanded comments disguised as jokes. And part of this is to see if you are going to just sit there and take it. Think about how many times you were sitting there with your best friend. And out of nowhere they started. Insulting you. With mean put downs. And you just sat there. Laughing it off pretending there's nothing wrong. And all the while the so called friend knows they now have the green light to. Rebelly. Abuse. You anytime they want. And that you must be desperate for a friend. Because no one in their right mind would sit there and take this kind of abuse. This is where boundaries come into play. You make an excuse. To cut the night or day short. And you go home. And when they call. You to hang out again. You are busy. With this. Or that. And eventually they will lose interest in you. And you will be able to move on to someone that values your friendship. And that sees you for who you really are. And that's a good friend. Or a good dating partner. With good potential for more. But you will never meet these good people if you are wasting your time. I mean this will all of my heart. You are literally wasting your time. With evil. People that are doing nothing. But just feeding off of your pain. So in order to have these boundaries. You need to stop. Feeling guilty for having these boundaries. If you stop hanging out with someone because of how they are treating you. Don't feel guilty about this. No one is getting hurt by you doing what's right for you. Trust me. They will move on and meet someone else. And so should you. And after you've done this a few times. You will notice something really strange. Three months into knowing this person. Or that person. You aren't being gaslit. A year later. They haven't tried the sweet. Mean cycle on you. And five years later they are still your friend. Or your dating partner. And any joking around. Is mutual. And harmless. Not mean spirited and sadistic. You see having boundaries are simple. Enforcing them. For those that have spent a lifetime being narcissistically abused is hard. But you have to do it. You have to if you want to live a happy and full life. And you. Can't feel guilty about walking away from someone that's giving you backhanded comments. Put downs. Or someone that's running the sweet mean cycle on you. Or someone that's gaslighting you. Telling you they never said something. They clearly said to your face. Life is too short to spend with these types of people. And I will tell you this. There are some good people out there. Yes. There are some good people out there. But you will only know them. If you get out of the house. Live your life to the fullest. You have boundaries. And you enforce these boundaries. Like I always say. Knowledge is power. The more we know. The more we can live happy and healthy lives. Until next time. Bye for now. And be good to yourself.